the second presenter is Narek Seferian, uh, who was born and raised in New Delhi, India. He received his higher education in Yerevan State University, uh, St. John College in Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico, uh, the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University, and the Diplomat Academy in Vienna. He served on the faculty of the Armenian University of Armenia, uh, American University of Armenia from 2013 to 2016, AUA. Narek? And his topic is Coming to Terms with Armenian American Identity, the Testimonies of Michael J. Arlen and Peter Balakian in Passage to Ararat and Black Dog of Fate. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for being here, and thank you to the organizers for putting together this very interesting two days. The United States is a diverse society that promotes a sense of citizenship, while at the same time largely allowing for the practices of pre-immigration cultures. The Armenian American story is quite fascinating that way. Armenian American as a category has become much more defined as an identity over the past few decades, comprised of many traditional Armenian elements accommodated within and shaped by the American environment that surrounds them. That was not always the case. For most of the 20th century, assimilation was the name of the game. In that light, the memoirs to be reviewed in this study consider two individuals who were born into families in which the Armenian heritage was secondary or outright discouraged and who came of age in 20th century America. Passage to Ararat by Michael Arlen Jr. was published in 1975 and Peter Balakian's Black Dog of Fate came out in 1997. Each published his text at almost exactly the same age in their mid-40s having about one generation between them, capturing somewhat different historical moments. My paper, the whole paper, includes a brief section on the family background of the two authors, as well as specific points of comparison from the text. I'll skip those sections for the most part today and share with you almost the whole concluding section. But very briefly, let me note, especially for those who are not familiar with these individuals, Michael Arlen Jr. was born in 1930, the son of Michael Arlen Sr., originally the Kran Kuyumjian from Bulgaria, who was a celebrated English author of the early 20th century. Arlen Jr. was educated in England and France. The family moved to the United States during the Second World War. Arlen had a career as a writer with the New Yorker magazine, also publishing books on the Vietnam War and two memoirs, among other writings. Peter Balakian, I'm sure, is much more well known to this audience. He was born in 1951 and grew up in the New York, New Jersey area. He is noted as a literary figure, a poet, widely published. Uh, he is currently on the faculty at Colgate University in New York State. Points of comparison. The biggest theme in both books is the relationship that the authors had with their families, in particular with their fathers. Arlen's entire journey, in fact, is a coming to terms with the difficult relationship he had with Arlen Sr. through rediscovering his Armenian identity. Balakian had more natural growing pains with his father, but he too regularly tries to tie in the Armenian heritage with more general interactions and tensions he had with the older members of his family. Three other points of interest that are touched upon in the whole paper, but I will not speak about uh, at length just now, but let me share those points with you. Firstly, reflections by Arlen and Balakian on the Armenian Genocide and the Jewish Holocaust. Second, their interactions with William Saroyan. And third, most enjoyably, their relationship with Armenian food. Uh, I'd be happy to discuss those in person later or if questions come up. The conclusion. The largest question looming over both texts, the largest question, why was the experience of the Armenian genocide kept from the new generation? Why was it so difficult, so impossible to openly discuss this part of the Armenian legacy? In Arlen's case, it was a very immediate personal affair. Arlen Sr. was a self-denying Armenian. He purposefully changed his name 
The Arlen family was made to be English, European, later American, pointedly so. It was not a question of not talking about the Armenian genocide. It was simply not being Armenian in any meaningful way at all. The Balakian story is different. Peter Balakian, the family, never denied their Armenian heritage. Perhaps the language was purposefully lost or not actively pursued for the, for the new generation. Certainly, there was an effort, a concerted effort, to integrate, to assimilate, to become as full Americans as possible. But none of the Balakians were ever told that they were not Armenian. The family prepared and partook of Armenian cuisine. They helped found and attend an Armenian church. It is only the experience of the genocide that was not passed on. One can speculate as to why. It could be a matter of shame, of deep sadness to be kept away from the children especially, a trauma to be repressed. Another uh, interesting point, neither the Kuyunjian Arlen family nor the Balakian family, that is Peter's father's family, experienced the Armenian genocide firsthand. These were both families that were outside the Ottoman Armenian areas in 1915. So maybe there was another kind of shame in that case, a kind of survivor's guilt, perhaps. Arlen offers an account of how self-hatred grew among Armenians as a result of Turkish denialism after suffering such a great loss. But the irony is that it was that very legacy of the genocide that awoke in Balakian a strong sense of Armenian identity, and in Arlen's case too. It was exposure to history that seemed to give some meaning to his sense of bearing the Armenian heritage. And what of their American heritage, their American identity? Both Arlen and Balakian readily assert their Americanness. It is quite a rich and full identity to bear, and the two feel secure in it, and why not? Balakian says that his parents made sure that he and his siblings were, quote, Americans first, end quote. This way, protecting them from the horrors of the Armenian past, something that Arlen too speculates as to the motivation behind his father's reticence about the family's Armenian background. The American identity allows for accommodating other identities in a way in which the Armenian ethno-national identity does not. These explorations by Arlen and Balakian aim at accommodating a certain legacy within a given reality, but viewed from the American perspective. Fitting the American into the Armenian would be a problem, but not the other way around one might expect. So then why are these explorations problematic? Is it the case that broader American society is still not accommodating enough? Even if most Americans understand that a vast majority of the population has an immigrant or mixed background, one's non-American identity still has to be explained, to be justified, or perhaps simply to be informed to a larger public. I remember yesterday in his keynote address, uh, Professor Thurlian also mentioned uh, a Canadian source, I think Taylor was the name, a philosopher who talked about how um, in a milieu of majority and minority, the minority somehow has to get a sense of recognition or placement by the majority um, for, uh, the kind of acknowledgement in a larger sense. So maybe that's also still the case in the United States. or. Is it the specific case of having the Armenian identity as one's co-identity what makes it problematic? An identity, the elements of which are sad and tragic in themselves. Now, both of these texts are first-person narratives. They're autobiographical memoirs, so analyzing them can be tricky. I thought of reaching out to Arlen and Balakian, actually, but in the end I decided against it. They could indeed offer their own commentary, but they would be yet more voices. And I didn't want to risk giving some authoritative voice here because Arlen and Balakian today, they are not the people who had those memories and who wrote those memoirs 20 years ago, 40 years ago. Arlen is carrying with him a sense of shame, of being tainted as an Armenian. Um, sorry, the file closed. This is why people bring things printed out on paper. 
I'm trying to be fancy. You're always fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Arlen is carrying with him a sense of shame, of being tainted as an Armenian. One gets the sense that Arlen is coming out with his text, a phrase used in the sense of homosexuals publicly revealing their orientation, and really, frankly, quite similar to the experiences of the crypto or Islamized Armenians in Turkey today. Arlen echoes Saroyan, his interaction with Saroyan, when he says, quote, to be an Armenian, to have lived as an Armenian, is to have become something crazy, end quote. He is trying to analyze the concept of Armenian qua Armenian, Armenians as Armenians in themselves. He is trying to somehow fit that into his Western sensibilities, but he is doing it as an outsider, ultimately. Balakian does not visit Armenia or Turkey in Black Dog of Fate as Arlen does in Passage to Ararat. However, both discuss the current and past homelands and both offer the same insight that recognizing the past is something beyond just acknowledging a simple event in history. Both wish that the Armenian experience could somehow find its rightful place in public consciousness, in public conscience everywhere, but most of all in Turkey. This seems to be the major turning point about which both authors write. The generation before them was silent about the Armenian genocide. Their own generation not only discovered or rediscovered the experience of their ancestors, but turned it into a public political issue. There is a moral facet, an imperative to this relationship with the past, something that their parents had never established. What their parents had established and maintained, however, was Armenian food, Armenian church, newspapers, schools, community centers, dance groups, the language. The Armenian identity had ways of expressing itself long before the first public Armenian genocide commemorations of the 1960s and 70s. In fact, the Armenian genocide was commemorated. It was talked about, not so publicly, but requiem masses were held. Uh, Babakyan's own grandmother delivered a talk in 1940, a public talk about her experiences, he notes. Yes. Um, what those authors, what these two authors have recorded in their memoirs, Arlen less so, Babakyan more, is that the Armenian genocide as a public issue turned into the defining element of the Armenian American identity in the 20th century. Why should that be so, though? Is it just easier, a more essential issue that can rally more people in, in righteous indignation around a dramatic, tragic cause? Is it more emotional, more appealing within the community and for the outside world? Or is the current generation making up for the silence of the previous one? Balakian's aunt reveals the family's survival story, and Balakian is furious that he is finding about all these details so late in life. He demands to know why it was kept from him, why even the previous generation never talked about it with the generation before their own. The aunt responds, a bit of a lengthy quote, quote, We had a different kind of relationship with our parents. What was private was private. It's not like today when everything is discussed by everyone to anyone in any place. You see parents on TV discussing their sex lives and their children are in the audience while their husbands watch from work with their friends. What kind of world is this? Maybe some mystery to life isn't so bad. Why does everyone these days feel they have to know everything from the time they are born? End quote. Why does everyone feel that way and even more so today with the internet and social media? Maybe not everyone, but everyone who participates in the globalized world every Westerner, every American. In the end, Arlen and Balakian remain Americans first. Surely they acknowledge or discover their Armenian sides or more about their Armenian sides. But one cannot change one's identity so radically. One cannot retroactively change one's childhood, one's upbringing or educational experiences. Perhaps Arlen and Balakian are trying to find out whether or not they are or can ever be more Armenian or Armenian enough. Being Americans, they have the luxury of asking that question, the luxury of exploring it, something their immediate ancestors could never have thought of in the Ottoman Empire, and also something which many people in the world today, and most of the world today, cannot think about. 
In the end, an apt summation can be given by quoting an unnamed member of the Armenian community in New York with whom Arlen interacts when he is unexpectedly invited to speak at an event uh, at the local Armenian church. The unnamed community member says, it's too bad we never saw your father here. Arlen doubtfully, Arlen doubtfully responds that Arlen Sr. might not have thought of himself as an Armenian. Of course he was an Armenian, the old man says. You are Armenian. It's not such a strange thing to be Armenian. Come, have some coffee. Thank you. <laughs>